right, cool. Um, well, hello and welcome to the Holy Hour Podcast. It's the bi-weekly all-cure podcast. And welcome to the party, everybody. <laughs> we got the special birthday party going for Wish tonight. We're Woo! Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. I'm Gavin. I'm joined by Chaz and Antonio. What's and up? we got two very special guests joining us tonight, too. So a packed house here. We got Matt and Kate. How's it going, special guests? Hello. <laughs> Welcome back. Thanks. Good to be back. Yeah. So you may remember Matt from, uh, what was the last time we had you on with the show in Paris? So uh, Kind yes. of fitting, right? Yeah. So uh, wrapped up the live talk. Let's talk about the real deal, the album. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. And Kate is becoming our uh, veteran anniversary guest you uh you, you were there for the uh faith debacle where we had uh five thousand people in the chat at one point yep. right 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 well yeah. when i talked about uh, adult diapers but then i asked you to edit it out yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, if you've had a change of heart and want to bring it back up um, this episode, you can... <laughs> it usually does come up somehow so uh, i guess it depends how, how you feel Ah. <laughs> and you're on board for the uh wild mood swings anniversary we sort of mashed in with your origin tale mm -hmm. there so we, we we piled a lot into that episode there, so. i love that so yeah origin well, by the way yeah. that was awesome yeah. that's the one with your yeah. letter that you were reading oh yeah yeah well the, the bonus awesome. material the bonus material has the letter in it yeah oh. yeah nope. For patrons only. For patrons. Yeah. Patreon patrons, yes. Yeah, we, the origin tale so historic, we had to do it in two parts <laughs> and make it a, no a special bonus feature. So, so very happy to see you guys and have you back in. And uh, yeah, we, we got a special night. Wish has been covered as we we're talking before we hit record here. Uh, Donald and I covered it way back early on. And Chaz was so offended that he had to become our friends immediately. And, um, <laughs> and then we talked about it again with him. And then uh, I guess we've done Letter to Elise as a single. Yeah. And we've done Friday I'm in Love as a single. And hoping to do a high single coming up shortly, just a feature on high. So, I, so lots of wish talk out there, but there's always so much more. I, you know? I think that you and I have talked about it m more than once. Like, I know we had, like, the, the first time we talked yeah. about it, and then I think we revisited yeah. it again. Um, Did we do yeah, two redos? I, I, I think so. So this might be number three <laughs> and number four for you. So so it's like the Halloween yeah, franchise. So. Over yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's just going to keep going. <laughs> so, yeah, well, uh, you know, I'll totally contradict everything I probably said in previous episodes. I'll be like blasphemy <laughs> but uh yeah so i, I feel like uh, it's 30 years on in itself is pretty crazy um you know we've had the other anniversaries those uh 40 year ones are a little weird because i'm like well yeah it makes sense that faith and pornography are 40 years old you know they're little before my time even so <laughs> but now we're getting into these ones where i'm like oh that was 30 years huh yeah i remember <laughs> going to that tape store and getting wish that day and being all excited and it was my, probably my first one where i went in as a kid and uh I freaked out because I went straight to the Cure section for the new album and didn't see it anywhere. And I was like, oh, my God, they don't have it. They don't have it. <laughs> like, yeah, dumbass. It's up front with the huge display and all over the. <laughs> so, oh. it, yeah, I was relieved. But, um, yeah, so it, there's a lot of. A lot of nostalgia wrapped up in this one, and that was something I'm constantly battling. But I thought maybe a good way to kick this one off would be. Uh, well, maybe before we get into your earliest memories, a good way to start is, of course, released on Robert Smith's birthday, April 21st. Um, it's their ninth studio album, for anybody who's keeping track of that. Um, and uh, also, top albums of 1992, because uh, our cure debuted on the U.S. Billboard charts with this album, yeah. coming in at number two. They didn't quite get number one. Uh, a little trivia. Do you guys remember what, what stopped them from getting into number one? There were so many good Which records album? that year, too. Um, I was, this one wasn't probably one. wasn't oh. a good record. Oh, <laughs> Death Leopard. 
Yeah. <laughs> I hate Def Leppard. I hate him even more now. <laughs> one of my favorite Robert quotes. But yeah, uh, Adrenalized. Yeah, and that's one of the in. worst Def Leppard records in my life. Yeah, yeah, that's not yeah, even like the Pour even... Sugar on Me one, is it? No. It's, it's that's, that's way far past cry. I don't even, like, it may have debuted high, but I don't think it had like a, a hit single on it. Like, a lot yeah. of people bought it, you know, based on previous, but. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, one of those deals where it was just kind of swept in. So, yeah, Def Leppard kept them out. They never topped Def Leppard. I think it finally, you know, gradually just went down after those weeks following. But um, I guess a couple weeks earlier, the Wayne's World soundtrack would have been what blocked them. So that, <laughs> I don't know if that would have been enough. a better or worse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, like Def Leppard and then just a quick rundown of the rest of the year. I guess through May, Criss Cross were the top album yeah. of 92. Oh yeah. yeah. Awesome. Which you know, totally crossed is, out. Is, yeah. and, I mean, two, <laughs> totally, two, totally two quintessential out. albums of my life, aside from which also came out in '92: Stone Temple right. Pilots, uh, Core, and Alice in Chains' Dirt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was a lot of ones that didn't make it to the top that were, you know, big '92 ones. What was it like? Oh, REM um, to uh, Nirvana, right? Wasn't Nevermind technically in '92? That was '91. No, that was '91. Is that '91 yeah. technically? Yeah. REM yeah, Automatic for the so. People was a big one that year. Yeah. That was everywhere that record. I was gonna actually yeah. I like that. Album. Yeah. Not the best REM, yeah. album, but it had some good songs. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I love it. That's a good one. <laughs> uh you didn't mention Billy Ray Cyrus. He came out around August and dominated <laughs> the charts for about two months with his achy breaky heart. I'm assuming it was that one. That'd be real bad if it was the follow up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then, and then her boy Garth Brooks just ran with it oh, for pretty much the rest of the uh, year. Yeah, and uh, Bodyguard came in at the end and saved the day. <laughs> and then, uh, so yeah, yeah then, as you can see, it's probably better not to be in the top spot on the Billboard charts, as we all know. And uh, pure history. <laughs> was it mm-hmm. uh, didn't Dre, Dr. Dre drop a record that? Year mm-hmm. uh, Ice Cube had one that was number one, The Predator, uh, at the beginning of. So, but you know, maybe later. So that's 92 on the top of the charts. Just a little context to show what our boys were up against there. <laughs> but, uh, but they did good, the album. Yeah. You know, they lost out the Def Leppard at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, too. So, you know. Yeah, they didn't work yeah. the last band, were really. they? So, yeah. Oh. <laughs> always, that was ironic. Always wasn't getting it? beat out. <laughs> uh, they, it is true. Uh, they should have pushed the drummer over. Uh, <laughs> he's going to be at the King of Prussia Mall in a couple of weeks signing yeah, art yeah. or something. Yeah, he's apparently an artist wow. with his with his one okay. hand. Uh, oh. Yeah, so. oh. yeah, that's pretty cool, I guess. But yeah, I remember yeah. at the Rock at and the Roll Hall of Fame, though. we were we were pissed because Def Leppard was closing it out. We're just like, ah, oh, we're leaving. Like we didn't even stop yeah. around to see him. So yeah, it is what it is. So. Secretly, maybe a little glad because then we could just get a. Out, out for a little quicker, earlier, yeah. you know, I was like, Yeah, let's go back to, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Hang out with especially everybody. if you're taking the train from Barclays, leaving there, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, but I guess, uh, as far as individuals, I always love to hear any earliest memories, whether it be way back or uh, where it fell in when you backtracked with the Cures catalog and your just earliest memories of. Wish maybe first listen or first few listen wishes listen wishes 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 <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah what do you think guys you, can you conjure up those those memories you think thirty years back or maybe not that far for some of you guys <laughs> so uh, uh, who would it, like to kick tec- it off it's technically the first full old cure album I bought not being a singles or or anything. Okay. I was 14, yeah. um, you know, and I remember going to Tower Records oh. with a couple friends, you know, that, you know, like my friend's older brother, because he could drive at that point. We're like, let's let's go to Tower, you know, and I'm um, yeah. saving up the money from like being a busboy at a pizzeria, you know, um, yeah. and uh, it's I was it was still cassette. I, I bought it on cassette first. Because um, yeah, was... I don't think I, it was, I think it was probably when I was 16. I think I started on the CDs. 
Um, cause I, I still couldn't fathom like, well, I can't make a mixtape. Why am I going to buy that thing? You know, <laughs> like, yeah. uh, it's like, they're going to have some fancy technology that lets you burn like a CD. Yeah. Yeah. Forget way. about that. That was, you know, that, that was like the price wizard. of a car. Um, yeah. so yeah, it's the first like full cure album that I bought, uh, before that, if I could awesome. scrape my pennies together, cause I couldn't buy tons of records at, you know, 12 and 13, I would go to the the compilations more, mm -hmm. you know, like, so yeah. it's the first fun, kind of full on that I bought. Yeah, awesome. And do you remember, what, were you like instant love or were you like, hmm? Oh, no, instant, because at that point, you yeah. know, too, I think, I think by the time I, I, I had the money and we went, the, you know, the Friday I'm in Love video had just aired and it was just on nonstop. You know, yeah. so again, that's one of the ones where I put in the VHS tape and just would hit record at night when my mom was sleeping. And then just like when she wasn't home, I would pop it in and be like, oh, cool. What did I catch? And I caught yeah. Friday I'm in Love. And I was like, yes, <laughs> you know, um, so I mean, I can't even tell you how many times I watched it. So. Pure joy. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> that's awesome. Cool. What about you, Matt? You, uh... Yeah, so. Um, I was a little young when it came out, it would have been eight, so it wasn't on my radar. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, I, I will say, as I got into the cure, so in my early 20s, my I don't know why I did this, I really don't do this with, any, with anybody else, but I really wanted to go in order. So yeah. I got the first things I got from them was uh, Kiss Me and Standing on a Beach, and then I went back, Three Imaginary Boys. Ironically, it was it was during the time that they started the uh, feels like forever ago, but the remaster <laughs> campaign. So I was getting those uh, seventeen seconds deluxe, deluxe faith deluxe, mm -hmm. all that yeah. just kind of like coincided. Um, but then I went to my I guess CD store, record store, and the right. two cheapest things they had, and I was kind of poor at the time, was <laughs> Wish, and they had a lot of copies of Wish in the top. So uh, got Wish. I <laughs> love the artwork. And um, it was like some things you can put on and it, it will take like a little while to grow on you. And this was just like, yeah. I'm good. Um, this is it. And I got it during the summertime. And I just have really good memories of sitting on the porch in my derpy apartment on like summer nights with a beverage yeah. just playing Wish. And then, yeah, like really quick, it just kicked off this fascination of, in my opinion, like the greatest period they had because you have 89 disintegration, but if you notice it kept going so like right after that you have entreat you have uh never enough you have harold and joe play out which i love and the mm -hmm. versions of wish and then once you get wish they start to look a little different we have a new logo and then even after that then you go right to you know obviously i love paris and show so just like mm -hmm. i was obsessed with that whole period and then going on ebay and hunting down the show uh vhs <laughs> <All right. laughs> and trying to get that to work but yeah no that so i, I got into a little bit later but it, it's always like a clap yeah yeah yeah, yeah I, mean, that's awesome, I mean speaking man. of artwork as far as major albums go this is the first lp you know that that it doesn't say the cure mm -hmm. yeah. every yeah. other record previously says the in front of it this just says cure, cure and i'm like you know i mean it wasn't until years and years later that i was like huh I'm like, I wonder, like, there had to be, like, there's got to be some kind of reason behind that. I, remember, I feel like Robert Smith doesn't do anything with that. I remember the reason. You can't, because uh, at uh, that time, there were many bands that were four-letter words, like Lush, Ride, um, mm -hmm. you know, and, and yeah. it was a thing. Like, it was a thing that you just mm -hmm. had one word. And I, rem uh, I think I remember reading, like, Robert being like, sure. <laughs> I mean, four letter words. Four letter words. If you look at like other albums from like the alternative music at the time, there are a lot of yeah. Oh, yeah, that makes total sense. Interesting. That's cool. Yeah, and even with the tracks, you know, like so many of the titles mm -hmm. on Wish are just one yeah. word. Yeah. You know, open. Apart. Show. Open. And yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, uh, Paris. Apart. End. Yeah. End. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Huh. Yeah. 
Yeah, I like that. You know, I, maybe they couldn't do the little like uh, <laughs> letters, the little slug letters to spell the either. You know, yeah. it just look really weird. Yeah. So. <laughs> he was like, "Well, for those record stores that are putting all the the Cure records in T, I want to be closer up, so put me in the C section." Yeah, you have <laughs> to say. <laughs> hopefully, nobody's putting. Yeah, them in hopefully tea. not. Yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine if been. somebody did that? Oh my god, that'd be a massive <laughs> the biggest section, section in the store. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oh man, but yeah, that'd be cool. Like getting you know all those together with the live albums, you know, like you're saying, that would be really cool when you could hear it all at once that way. But uh, what about you, Kate? Do you remember purchase day or how'd that go? Um, uh, it probably was a Columbia <laughs> uh, house thing. <laughs> right on. As, as long as I sign up just for that, I was making it, you know, before they started sending me collection notices but <laughs> but, I, but I do remember like um I mean it was my senior year of high school disintegration was the epitome and then you had this other thing that was like we didn't expect it to have those pop songs on it Friday I'm in love was it was really cute until you heard it on the radio a whole lot yeah true. a whole lot and then everybody heard it and then everybody loved it and that was different from when you know as a freshman sophomore junior in high school we had these dances that were called um, mixers and it was it was like the catholic girls school and the catholic boys school and so the songs that you know the cool the weirdos like us we would just sit on the floor like all cross-legged like this until they played just like heaven or, right. and they never played anything from disintegration but so but finally you had an album that had a single on it that they would play but then everybody yeah. was dancing so it was no fun <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh, yeah i totally remember that was like a similar thing where um you know we had always just been the secret cure fans in the drama department kind of level you know and mm -hmm. then like and then one of them was like senior year and he had enough pull, I guess, with the morning announcements, and he played Friday in Love on the Friday over the announcements. And I remember being in gym before the, the day started, and Donald was in my class, and we're just sitting there <laughs> all miserable with our big exactly. shoes on in the gym, you know. And we hear like fucking Friday in Love come on the thing. We we're like, what the, you know, like, are we, are we really hearing this, you know? <laughs> Both of us just start grinning, but then we're like, wait a minute, everybody knows now. <laughs> like, stop, yes. stop, you know, or you just like yeah. didn't want everybody else to know the secret. And I was just like, oh, God, I feel dirty. <laughs> this is weird. <laughs> but uh, Yeah, I mean, this is definitely the jumping point of them being one of the biggest bands, you know, yeah. um, and most, you know, influential. I mean, it's, this was uh, that launching pad. And, and uh, you know, a lot of people, that's always – that's always that argument point for so many people, like even on the Nirvana discussion, you know, yeah. um, you know, everyone's like, you know, never mind, and, you know, uh, cause you know, that's what, that was the launching pad, the big one, you know? So it's, and there's always this weird romanticism that you don't want to share it with everyone, but at the same point, you, I guess you do, because if it wasn't yeah. for that, we might, he mm -hmm. might still, he not be doing music. You know, yeah, so yeah, there's yeah. this weird, like, I don't know, there's, you know, me and my friend Chris Enriquez, I just, uh, I'm having him on the, my other podcast, Nobody Speaks, and we were talking about, we were like, we were real assholes about what we liked, and about, like, not sharing it with people, and we were yeah. like, as we got older, <laughs> we're like, man, yeah, we, we, like, we didn't want those bands to go on and get big, because we wanted them to be yeah. ours, but we benefited by that. Because now there's this reinsurgence of a lot of those 90s bands that, you know, there's reissues, there's, you know, reunion tours on those big albums, and we're still getting it, be and we wouldn't if they just stayed our little secret, you know? So there's yeah. like, there's a plus and a minus to it that's very hard to handle as a fan. You know. I remember it being a bit validating too, in the sense that I was always wearing the mm -hmm. Cure shirts, and the kids were trying to beat me up for it, or whatever <laughs> the rednecks on the bus and shit. And then by seeing them like constantly on MTV and knowing that it was a chart hit and everything, I'm like, see, 
I told, told you. you. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a little oh, bit of that, you know, and then you get like these same kids wearing their gear shirt, you know, six months later or something. I'm like, mm -hmm, yeah, whatever. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. That's why I love but, um, the uh, uh, show concert film, especially yeah. that opener. They play tape and you see the, the shot of the different people walking yeah. in. You have, you have the goths, you have like jocks. You have everybody, really. Yeah, like, yeah. It's so yeah. cool. It's just cool to see it like at their absolute peak. And I think that was probably like the first time it really started to stretch out. You know, that's something we loved about like current care shows. When you go, you just see everybody, yeah. you know, like, especially when you see them in like Charlotte or something. I'm just like, whoa, this dude's a care fan, you know, <laughs> <laughs> like standing next to some guy and another one, a little kid, an old lady, yep. you know, just like, what an awesome. This is so diverse and cool. But, um, yeah, so I, I, I could have watched if they had just done all of show with the concert and footage of the fans walking around. Ooh. That would have been a, amazing. <laughs> Another thing they can put on the reissue. <laughs> I, I want to say I think that the long. term sellout came out around this time, too. Oh, uh, yeah. For yeah. like, you know, oh, there's yeah. such a sellout. Yeah, yeah. Like the, sellout. the, the yeah. cure became a sellout. Yeah, REM yeah. became a sellout. Because yeah. they were they were bands that sold out big stadiums, and so they were no longer, <laughs> um, you know, they were no longer elite yeah. in the yeah. in yeah. the weirdos. <laughs> I, I can't see them in a small arena now. I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not half empty; it's sold out. Yeah, it's like they were, it's like they weren't that small to begin with for us. We missed that boat like oh, years yeah. ago. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, when we were selling out Dodger Stadium. Three years yeah before. exactly yeah. <laughs> right. um do you remember then compared to other albums kate like your response of were you totally blown away with it or were you kind of like how does this compare to disintegration kind of thing or well at the time i had started playing guitar more and i had started playing with a band and I use that in quotes because we basically were like a cure cover rehearsal band <laughs> like we spent way more time rehearsing and playing cure songs than we did a lot of other things but but that meant I had to learn to play wish yeah. like wish was the obsession at that point and I, a big part of that was Boris because our yeah. drummer mm -hmm. was just, a, I mean, this is, uh, to me, Wish is like Boris's peak. Um, yeah. It just, all of those symbols. Yeah. Yeah. And, oh, yeah. and the, and yeah. the, and the, like, um, the, you know, the, what is the, the, um, the kick drum thing, the Manchester thing, you had the Manchester yeah, yeah. shuffle beat. And there was a little mm -hmm. bit of that Boris was bringing into the cure. And you're like, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I remember that. Yeah. I remember that being like something that we all obsessed over were the, the, the drum beats for all of these songs. What did you think about their, you know, just because they change looks every, I mean, like every album cycle, you kind of had like a new uh, yeah. appearance and things like that. And so mm -hmm. he's, you know, Robert, obviously what we, you said, they're not doing the cure, it's cure. And mm -hmm. he's got the shorter hair, kind of looks a little more 90s-ish, I guess. Like yeah. what was that? How'd you feel about that? You know, it was interesting because, well, be, with play out kind of in between, you had those those floral shirts that mm -hmm. were just so pretty, and he had the giant Possibly hair, bigger hair, than yeah, ever. yeah, real was, big. Like yeah. he he hit like a bad point though with that big hair in the TC and uh, two concert or um, that like secret show, and then yeah, when you when you watch show, his hair was shorter, but it it felt it felt like cleaner. You know, you're like he's 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 washed up a little bit. Yeah, especially like those early videos, like high and Friday Yeah, you know, oh yeah, you know, his hair was real short. Down a bit. Yeah. yeah, you know, and I was like, that's why they got hits now. You know, <laughs> I was like, they're not. He would have preferred his hair a little longer than it was, and then. Yeah. But I feel yeah. like he yeah. did that with disintegration too, because in pictures of you, his hair was shorter. Hmm. Yeah. It's like he starts hmm. over when a new album, he kind of does like a right. fresh cut and then it starts to yeah. grow back. And by the end of the tour, his hair is better. I like that each album has its own, you know, look, even like with Wild Mood Swings with the hockey jerseys, like each thing is distinctive. So I, I thought that was yeah. cool. I'm just curious, like as a fan of Disintegration, 
like just being in that world for three years and then bam you see friday and I'm, I'm in love and you're like, what you know like yeah. it was that it was, just, it was happy done, and yeah. he was kind of it was almost preppy right. in a way <laughs> yeah okay i got you yeah uh, but you know that that jump to like the poppy though like that i feel like is also very reminiscent of like love cats dropping though you know what i mean like so mm -hmm. you know it's definitely not the first time robert pulled that for sure. Yeah, you know I mean, he's always throwing those curveballs. Like, yeah. you know, Matt was saying too, like every album, that's why it is cool because he's like, oh, a new little twist, a new look, and you can kind of yeah. tell which era it is in hindsight by the size of his hair and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Polka dots. So, and, he had the polka dots back in Love yeah. Cats, and then he brought them back in Disintegration. And then the floral, yeah, but the floral it. didn't last through the whole Wish Tour. That was just kind of like a. Nah. Yeah, that was more like mixed up into early yeah. Wish, I guess, would be the time span. And yeah, I guess by Wish he was doing more of like the open shirt with like the long like yeah. the uh, shirt, shirt, shirt yeah. kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah with the like long a black sleeve. jacket in the uh, show, right? Like the white yeah. t-shirt and the black like denim, maybe. Yeah, I think it was just like an open button-up shirt kind of. Or thing. open right. Yeah. The guys yeah. that were in then in the um, band I was in, they they all went to um well one of them worked at this store structure which oh, yeah. merged oh, with God, express do you remember that oh, I, yeah <laughs> yeah yeah and like so I when that was we, only a new england thing yeah sure when we so <laughs> they, they they had lots of button down shirts and that was that was the thing and you know if you could find one that didn't have white buttons that was a big deal and yeah. then also the silk shirts because there was that mm. sort of silky shirt that he wore um, in the awards show for the, the Brit Awards um, mm -hmm. that has the sort of floral thing. Yeah, I looked in the ladies' department at Leggett's so much for like a flower shirt, you know? <laughs> <laughs> like, I came close a few times and like getting some like old ladies' shirt, you know? I was <laughs> like, this is it. It's perfect. My mom's like, I'm not buying that for you. <laughs> like, Come on, mom. <laughs> but yeah, it's. Uh... Pretty amazing. And I like that all of them kind of shift a little too, you know, by wish. Like Boris, you know, goes total flat yeah. hair, you mm -hmm. know, yeah. and wearing the cool glasses. I mean, it looks cool and, as hell, as always. Yeah, yeah. 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 Simon's just going, going full, like, down hair, but pulled back, yeah. maybe with, like, a bandana thing in there. and <laughs> No little Bo Peep hat, so I was happy he lost the... <laughs> uh, I, I like that. That's it. That's... Well, maybe for, like, another time, but... Yeah, you I can think do a whole between, episode between on that. Simon and Pearl, there's a lot of uh, Prince layover there. Yeah. From yeah, like 86 to 92, I'll say. Yeah. True. Yeah, and this being you know, also, you know, uh, Pearl's like last album for 16 years with them, uh, you know, it was definitely uh, some of the guitar work on this record, which I, just, yeah. I love. Um, you know, and in doing the research too, and just looking up some things and reading notes and, you know, get being a gear nerd, this was the first time the cure had ever done any guitar work in drop D. So, I am. so oh. they did a, like Friday I'm in love was in drop D and he was saying how, really? and, and then I was reading where they had this big issue with then playing it live because they didn't want to retune and they didn't want to all change guitars. And they also had the accidental keeping of the speed up because it actually yeah. wasn't, a, you know, which also changed it. So it never sounded the same live as it did on the record. And they, yeah. they always kind of felt weird about it, but it being in, in drop D a lot of that open stuff live sounds muddy. You know, mm -hmm. and which can be cleaned up. Yeah. And I was like, they actually, I had no clue. And I'm like, and I've looked up, you know, guitar tabs to like play these songs, you know, throughout the years. And I was like, wow, I've never realized so many of these songs were in drop D. And I was like, I don't know if that was Robert experimenting or Pearl just getting crazy because his guitar work I felt was always a little more, you know, like yeah. pushing it edgy wise. Yeah. You know, so like from the musician nerd standpoint, I was like, wow. And I'm like, then it was yeah, yeah, the D until, and for, for a record that has so much pop aspect to it, I'm even more shocked that D was the like open tuning chosen for it, you know? Yeah. I was like, hmm. Yeah. There's definitely just some weird, Kate and I were emailing back and forth, but when you look at like the songbook for that one in particular, there is some crazier stuff going on, which is funny. You said your band, you know, really focused on that one and playing those parts because it is definitely a lot trickier than like if you were just, you know, even doing one of the early dark albums or whatever. That's always a little bit more 
straightforward you know like they're like open has some crazy tuning i think and weirder chords for sure definitely stuff that they you know even when you look at wild mood swings later it's a couple of the songs definitely have some weird stuff going on but uh yeah it, it's it's got some odd and just so many layers yeah, I mean, that's so always the thing where it's like yeah. it really is like disintegration but with guitars you know it's like yeah my kind of listen today, I was almost like, do I really need to listen to this for tonight? You know, I've listened to this goddamn album so many times, but I was like, all right, got to do it. And just totally blasted it with the headphones because I hadn't done that in a while. It's usually my just crank it in the house kind of album. And it was just cool. Like the little things you hear, just the swirlings around mm-hmm. of everything and yeah. open with the drums going back and forth. I know, and I love there's, that. There's just so much cool stuff that like disintegration would have with like keys but mm-hmm. this is just like some right. feedback guitar thing over here in the corner and it's just and like, i think Damn. i mean to your point especially antonio you're saying with the different uh, tunings and things like that where disintegration is beautiful and it's very linear um but wish the contrast between like a song like a part doing the unstuck yeah. or cut those are three very very specific genres go and you would think like it shouldn't work from like a cohesive standpoint but somehow it does to me i mean yeah yeah. that's kind of what we tried to touch on with dave allen there of just amazing how he makes it all blend together you know it really is like a concise kiss me almost where it's like how the hell do these songs fit? You know, you got like windy times all funky and then you got like a super sad trust and you got pride and love. I mean, it really is cohesive from start to finish. It all fits the open and under like the perfect bookends, you know, and it's, it's too literal, a huge testament. Ah, Uh, Uh, But but even when he was saying, well, I'm, I'm glad he said what he said about, doing the unstuck when you when you yeah. when you guys asked him i was like oh i'm like okay i like his <laughs> i like his thought process on what that means and i was like oh, that's yeah. awesome it almost like gave me like new light like the next time i listened to the song i almost like was listening to it in a different way you know and i was like oh yeah yeah it seemed like such a no-brainer kind of like, wait wait i forget I what he said remind me uh just how like the whole phrasing of doing the unstuck is just like shaking the habit kind of yeah, thing like, of like getting out of a rut you know and you know yeah. which makes sense you know i'm like oh yeah totally but for I, some reason i always just kind of latched onto the let's get happy because i was always a little torn on that line you know yeah, in particular yeah. i was just like I, you know it's a great song yeah, but like it's it. like uh but uh it's just like what so i mean that makes it sense uh, like let's get happy you know like get out of the funk kind of thing you know and yeah and, uh, shake it but off. you know what it almost is because when you when you know when you read all the stories and you listen to disintegration in all its masterfulness um you know i think robert kind of came out of whatever the major issue he was going through doing that record and writing that album (laughs) but you still get some of that trickles with like a part and stuff on this album but at the same time i think he's in a new headspace and that's where we're getting the other stuff and you know And I love that. It I, I think it's, you know, throughout my life, it, you know, Disintegration is my favorite Cure record. But there were times in my life where Wish was. Definitely. Yeah. I'm not, mm-hmm. you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to lie. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, but, as, you know, I think as, as I got older, Disintegration became my, like, my Bible of, of music, yeah. you know, of records. It's, you know, it's in my top five favorite albums of any genre of all time. But there was plenty of times in my life where Wish was the go-to record because it had enough of the sad and enough of the happy where it just it, yeah, it, it could mix. fit whatever mood I was in at the time or, you know, get mm-hmm. me, you know, and that's that's what I love about it. It is such a perfect, I think, mixture of all things that we now, you know, as 40 years worth or plus years of their music, it kind of, it's a, like they're good melting pot, you know? Oh, agree. Yeah. Agreed. I think it's it's takes a little piece of everything. Like a part, you can hear a little bit of faith in 17 seconds. The Friday I'm in Love, obviously, if you go back to those pop singles that they had in their early 80s, you still have a little disintegration. A lot of kids, yeah. but I really think that's the cool thing about it is, so by then they were early 30s or late 20s, early 30s. It's mm-hmm. kind of a mature, like conglomeration of every little thing they work towards. And then they get rewarded with their highest chart hit you know yeah. stuff like that so 
it's like a very feel good uh, you know what i mean like yeah it is it's like it's going like, back to what we're saying you yeah, can be they, happy for them to get yeah. to that point yeah exactly. we're yeah like something like trust might not be is like gut-wrenching to his soul is like something from faith maybe but at the same time he knows so well by that point how to just pull that out you know like he can do it he can yeah. do something oh, yeah. that is as sad as disintegration where you know a part might not be as really sincere as like something from disintegration but it sounds that fucking way when you listen to it if you're going through that and you listen to it you're right there with him you know so it's like yeah he's He's got it down. And, at and that to point. wish impossible. Even impossible. love, it's like he's check, check. You know, you know? <laughs> tuition yeah, yeah, possible yeah. things. You were going to say tuition possible yeah. things. I love this song. Yeah. 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 It, I, yes, and you know what's yes. funny? <laughs> I think it might be the most underrated Cure song for, yeah. it, in the sense of like, there's just, that song is fucking great, but it never yeah. gets mentioned. And I don't know if it's because there's too many other like shining things on the record. I don't know, but it, it very, yeah. I mean, it, I mean, but then again, so is a letter to Elise. I mean, that's that's a no-brainer. It's one of the greatest songs. But to wish impossible things, I just feel like gets passed up because there's so much other stuff on this album. Yeah, but man, the amount of times I've like, you know, cried into a, a glass of whiskey to that song, you know, like <laughs> <laughs> totally. I wonder too. I was thinking of that today when I was listening to it and really trying to just see something that I hadn't seen before and just the beautiful strings on that yeah. you know oh, like and i wonder almost if you can't i think if it's he the feels best on some too. yeah which is saying something you know what i mean yeah, like, yeah it's... if you think of like the classic robert vocals like disintegration the song uh trust yeah. is really good too yeah I feel like he really goes places in there and you know you can tell when he, it's completely genuine and, and honest and i think like your yeah. point to wish impossible things like you really get that vibe and it's 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 um, an actual he it's an actual viola played on it too. It's not a synth or yeah, keys, it doesn't, which is and that's why I think maybe he doesn't do it live as much because maybe to him mm. it doesn't sound as good. Yeah, because you know? yeah, because like, that's yeah, and that's that. that's not an instrument that gets used on recordings live as much because it is very easily done on a synth or a keyboard, you know, yeah. and then you throw it through some filters and add shit to, it and it sounds yeah. like it's real, but you know. It's, oh, it's so good. Yeah, it's cheap. But yeah, I hope they would bring that back. That would be a cool one. <laughs> I love the drums <laughs> on it, to the too. List. The drum is like, <laughs> boom, 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 boom. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so dreamy. But it's funny. I mean, I guess kind of steer in that direction. Unless, Chaz, you want to talk about your earliest memory? I think we didn't. Oh, no, because we've, we've we've <laughs> talked about this so many times. and just sitting back and listening to it's everybody. It's somewhere in there. Yeah, we'll put a like, little footnote yeah, in there, like, yeah. see episode. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, the only point I would probably say is that I, I've i taken Wish more as a uh, their next Head in the Door album yeah. than than anything else. Yeah, that, that's uh, it's a good got comparison. it doesn't it's not perfect, but when it hits, it hits a hundred percent. You know, and yeah. even like, like I don't know, I could compare to Wish Impossible things to Sinking, or you know, there's there's comparisons all around uh, yeah. the pop side with you know Friday in Love with you know In Between Days or Close yeah. to Me. So and then there's the the sad. And then the stuff that doesn't fit, like Baby Scream and um, what the fuck is uh, Wendy Time. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. You know, what the fuck is Wendy you know, Time? I think that should be the name of that song. What the fuck is Wendy Time? <laughs> what the that, fuck is a, the name of that, that song I don't like? That's a good pound for pound matchup, those two records against each other. Yeah. You're right. There is a very similar like kind of wavy pattern to its feel. Oh, that's a good call. Yeah. Good call. Or almost the idea too. I always used to say "Kiss Me" because it seems like what everybody won't, that complains about "Kiss Me" would be if you did strip out a lot of the double album. Fat you of you like, know my you know feelings I mean? on like, "Kiss Me," so like I, I think if yeah. you strip away too much of that, you're not going to have like a head on the door type of album. Like yeah. like I don't think there's enough there to compare to stronger. the two albums yeah, too. So, yeah. so, I see what you're um, saying. Let's each stronger, make a like, twelve the... song playlist from Kiss Me Tracks <laughs> and <laughs> see. <laughs> we need yeah. to be it's, like, it's up there with wild mood swings. This this battle goes on and on forever. Well, yeah. so if they were version. like doing a trilogy like they did with Disintegration, uh -huh. Pornography, and Blood Flowers, um 
So if Wish was part of a trilogy, definitely Head on the Door. Would Kiss Me be the other one? Or would it be like the top? What was that rumor a couple of years ago? Wasn't it Head on the Door? Top and Kiss Me. Was, yeah, oh, was there a rumor? I didn't hear that. Yeah. Uh, 2014. But, I mean, there was also a rumor that they're putting out three albums. Oh so. yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. But no, they, <laughs> those rumors I, I think I think they had played those three albums together at some point, and like it was just yeah. a rumor that there was going to be like a, a tour or something along those lines. I don't remember. But those but, just go in yeah. a row, you know. It's yeah. Because like, they're in a row, you yeah. know. Like I guess if you're taking the idea of like pornography, disintegration, blood flowers, yeah, it's a certain sound that keeps the trilogy going. Yeah, I wonder what wish would be, you know, like head on yeah. the door. I, yeah, head I on the door, like... and I would even take wild mood swings. Yeah, just, that's what I'm thinking too. Cause yeah. I, yeah. yeah. It, Wish still has like head on the door um, has a lot of experimentation, just like you're saying with the baby screams and Kyoto song and things like that, where wish is kind of a more, uh, I think like kind of like mature con like concerted oh, yeah. effort. Yeah. And, a lot more layers. And, uh, yeah. And, and even though wild mood swings is not as strong, I think we could all admit that compared to wish it, it might thematically have a little more with it than mm -hmm. to me. Head on the door is just, like very adventurous and the highs hit so high on that thing that I don't even know if wish gets up there. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, it gets the up there, but on a different not, feel. But... Yeah. That's what yeah. I was going to say. Yeah. Yeah. I would say lows. Definitely. Right. I feel like sinking letter to release the wish impossible things. Yeah. I can get down on that shit, but sure. like highs, I don't think they have anything that, would come close to in between days or close to me. Like if you're going to talk about poppy stuff. Oh, for pop stuff. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I, it's, yeah. It's just, that's a thing. It's just so different. Cause like close to me is its own vibe. And yeah, I couldn't put it with Friday. I'm in love for some reason yeah. or even high. Although I guess high would be a little bit closer to that argument. Well, the yeah. top but has yeah. caterpillar, right? So caterpillar can yeah. go there. I feel like. Gee. E. Yeah, that was, that was pulled out and put in with the Yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> that song's so good. It should be put in with the better albums. <laughs> oh, you don't like the top. Okay. Yeah. See, I like the top. No, so. no I like I it. I top. just, uh, yeah, it's. Chaz is getting yeah, I'm the, the I'm, I'm stick in the mud. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'll, Antonio. Uh, yeah, too, I'm actually. low. Yeah, it's, it's way it's low on my totem pole. It it, <laughs> it, it does it does go Gosh. above self-titled, but that's where it sinks. Okay, it's right. it's not completely. Oh business. man, that's like, the the like, new album hasn't even come out yet, and it's already above the self-titled. So it's not. Really <laughs> yeah, <bad>. yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be tough. Yeah. I feel like yeah, open I mean, I and. Shake Dog Shake are somehow similar. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah, they have some good range. Yeah. And I'll drop, I'll drop some more controversialness for you too. I'll, like, I'll take Wild Mood Swings. I, I like Wild Mood Swings better than I like Kiss Me, Kiss Me, Kiss Me. Wow. Yeah, I can't do it. Yeah. Oh! <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You're killing him. I, 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 do, I love Wild Mood Swings, and I don't hide it. I love, yeah, I love it too, but. Oh, there's there's way too much oh, bad kiss me music so on that album. We're getting off a of wish though, so yeah, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> <stick on topic. laughs> well, I guess as far as comparisons, I like the idea of thinking of Head on the Door and how wonderfully it just is kind of like the beginning of that era, and Wish yeah. is kind of the finale. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of, you know, and it's more than just the area for sure. Yeah, I mean, maybe it's subconscious. Just yeah, Boris and having Poro in there. Maybe it's all kind of psychological because it is that tight lineup from there. Yeah, there and was, you know, it was but, ten years with that but, lineup, right? Yeah, I think it was yeah, ten years. and that's would that be the really longest really span sound... of one lineup? I mean, you had it, Perry it, it, added yeah. in there, but well, it's yeah. it's by far, I would say the the most the best i guess lineup solid what about the current in, lineup and it's like yeah they've probably been you know together what? It, technically longer who knows <laughs> if, if two of these three records are really really great uh, it's a different conversation but i don't know yet you know right because this like, lineup yeah. hasn't recorded anything together yeah so it's like i can't yeah 
Yeah. But they've been together that, you know. They have, Korean, right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Cool. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, if we're going to, yeah. The, you know, I'm the waiting... longest iteration of your band together hasn't made any music together, but. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, they they <laughs> made, I mean, they sound, this, this lineup sounds unbelievable live, but if we're going to talk about, like, what was created with a lineup, that's the all-star yeah. lineup, is this, this wish-ending lineup yeah. for me. I don't know. Call yeah, me crazy. It's hard to argue. I mean, it's you know also the age and the how their career was building. I mean, there's so many factors that, of course, you know, it's gonna gonna be that yeah, way. You yeah. know, it's hard to see just that with your age and everything. They had a good but, budget, uh, probably too. Yeah, a good budget. budget. Yeah, well, there's also label. probably a lot less like like drug abuse also going on on the tours now <laughs> as compared yeah, now, to yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. a lot of candy bar abuse instead this yeah. <laughs> <Yeah>. is <laughs> more rowdy really they're taking it up a notch you know <laughs> um i guess something i wanted to touch in with the idea of wish reflecting on its birthday here of the idea of how many uh different directions it could have gone you know when you really look at like the pieces and how he said it is diverse and has so many angles where it could have you know, even listened to it today. I was like, really, until you get to do the un doing the unstuck, it's a pretty dark album other than high to that point. It's pretty, you know, you got open and, and then mm -hmm. high, but then apart into edge of the deep green sea. So all those are like pretty long songs, you yeah, know? Yeah. And uh, I just want to so talk about edge of the deep green sea for like four hours. Yeah. Already. Let's give that a few minutes of praise here. Now that we've all can yeah. move on from the, the dink, dink, dink of the piano and really appreciate it. <laughs> what Is it Charis that doesn't love that song? I fucking love that song. I don't, oh, good. I oh, oh, so it must have been Donald that doesn't love it. Yeah, I think it was all Donald there. Okay. So <laughs> I think we, we, we need to spend at least a good five to ten minutes on <laughs> the genius of this song. Unless uh, Antonio or Matt, you got uh, any... I think you guys are on board with that song, right? Oh, I love that song. Yeah. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah, there, there's, not, there's not a song on this record that I don't... That I, you know, that I, like, skip. You know, yeah. I'm not I'm not skipping any of them. I don't know about that. Maybe so. one. We'll come back to That's, one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> there, there might be one. <laughs> but, but yeah, I mean, as far as flow, it is, you know, it's only skippable because the others are so great. I think. But yeah, it's a deep green sea. I mean, you get just weird structure, but it's just so awesome. Great lyrics. It just builds so wonderfully. And it's long, but feels like it's two minutes long when you listen to it. I mean... I don't know. I feel like I throw a million compliments at it, but how yeah. do you guys feel? Does it just hit all the I right spots? They they do such a good job with like the theatrics of it in a way where it's like mm. it feels like a blockbuster, you know? Like, damn, we're locked into this. I think yeah. to a lesser extent, a part has this too. And cut mm -hmm. is a, like a different even interpretation of that, but it's just like such, it just hits so hard. Like yeah. everything yeah. about that is just so on point. Lyrics are fantastic, awesome vocals. Kate, what you're saying with Boris, like, holy shit. Yeah. Like, dude, mm -hmm. this this lineup and this performance of the song on the album and live is like, yeah. fuck, it's like the dream team. Just that intro, you know, with like the yeah. feedback and the ding, ding. I started getting like a chill up my right leg and it just went up all the way up my arm, up just on half my head, which is weird, but it like was only on half my head. And I was like, <sighs> and even before it all kicked in and then it kicks up and then yeah. I started listening like really carefully to the drums and like all right I don't know the names of every symbol but I feel like it might be the China symbol that he he like kind of does like little shimmers on and those almost feel like waves coming in and they're not, what's cool about it is like, they don't happen uniformly after every phrase. It's not like you're like, you're expecting a symbol to, but then it doesn't. And then it does. And and you're not really sure, even now, like I'm not sure exactly when it's gonna happen. And I love that. Like, I, just like these little, little things. It reminds it me so of the high, song yeah. disintegration to me is like a partner with, Edge of the deep green yeah. sea because it doesn't really have a refrain it it, yeah. it doesn't have like that traditional song structure but it tells a story 
and it tell and it has a mood and you're like lyrically i'm just like into it every single time oh yeah, yeah. the lyrics on this song are unbelievable like when you just read them out it's like it's like this perfect poetry i mean aside from the i always say to myself i'm like is a hundred thousand million actually a number <laughs> Like when he says a hundred thousand million days, and I, I was like, he just really wants the hammer of the, a way that it's like a lot. A lot. <laughs> yeah, like, he's and like, I'm gonna use all of them, hundred thousand and millions. What? Totally. <laughs> and like, it's such a brave thing to do because he's just like, uh, probably like, I don't give a shit, you know? Like it's, yeah, yeah. it's oh my god. When I, I've done that, where I've just gone down and just read it, not with the song, like just read it for its you know, for its lyrical content. And there are so many amazing parts that I'm like, oh, why did I never write a line that good? I'll just take one of those. You know? just yeah, one yeah. Of those. Just, yeah. Just to write like one or two of those sentences, I feel yeah. like I would write my greatest song and he put them all in one song. I'm like, God damn it. Literally. Yeah. I, a distinct memory of that. And I've probably told a billion times. So apologies to anybody out there, but uh, like first listen i ran home and ran down in my little basement room and read the lyrics with listening to it on the first you know and i remember that song in particular just being like eyes popping out of my head like oh my god this is perfect <laughs> <laughs> it just keeps going and going yes yeah, so. yeah that song does not stop and yeah. that's how yeah. i was with letter to elise with the lyrics yeah, yeah. That like too. that's yeah. might be that's crazy saying this that might be his best to me like yeah. the best lyrics he's ever written it's straight up there, know. like that picture. The way the vein, I was gonna you know, say, like, I was yeah, gonna say, it's... Edge of the Deep. Uh, the, the songs we're all talking about, Letter to Elise, and like you were about to say, um, also, the, those are, I think, three lyrically best songs yeah. for sure. Like, I mean, oh, God, again, yeah, I wish I, I, wish I, I, I wrote. <laughs> <laughs> it makes me want to never pick up my guitar again. Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> or never put it down. I Speaking of guitar, really. like the guitar, like the rhythm guitar in that, that he plays on the Ovation 12 string. For Edge of the Z Green 3. Edge of the Z Green 3. Like when I was trying to figure out how to play that before I had the song book or the, you know, the, 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 the music, whatever book to, to, yeah. to see what the chords were, I would have never guessed like, that's something that he does in certain songs where when you hear that part by itself, you're like, that doesn't sound like anything. That doesn't, that doesn't ring true. But then when you hear it with the bass and with the keyboards, even though it's ding, 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 like then it all yeah. comes together and it creates chords that weren't there before. Yeah. yeah it's so weird yeah i constantly do that still like where i'll pick it up because it is just like an e chord like yeah. slid up you know and it just keeps mm -hmm. bouncing back and forth and stuff but like yeah i was like oh that'd be cool just do like a folk version of it's a deep green sea and like it just never sounds right you know it needs yeah. all the other shit you'd almost, you'd around, almost have to just, just like, like put in like you'd have to come up with the chords that just work with the melody you'd have to completely yeah. To do like a an acoustic like stripped down version of it, you know, it would yeah. be great. I, I'd I'd love to hear it, but I wouldn't want to compose it. Be the one. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 I want no part of that. Uh, <laughs> uh, I guess going back to the idea that of the directions it could have taken, though, um, you know, it could have been much darker. It could have been all poppier, you know, or funkier. Really, when you listen to some of those outtake things of like the music for dreams and. Stuff like that. I mean, you get a little of that with Wendy Time and, and the Wawa's on, even the rock and Wawa on cut yeah. and stuff like that. But, like, I mean, all those, like, Music for Dream outtakes are all like, <laughs> it's yeah, like it could have yeah. been, like, a whole album of that. I'd be yeah. like, oh, my God, thank God they didn't do that. But, uh, <laughs> um, but, I mean, it could really easily, you know, he even said that in interviews where people say it's it's too happy, it's a happy cure album which is kind of silly because people do just latch on to doing the unstuck and Friday I'm in love. Yeah. It's like, if yeah. you take those two out, it's a pretty dark album. Oh, you know? yeah. It's like, well, heavy it, especially due to the yeah. fact that, like I said, like Friday I'm in love accidentally came out that way. So it definitely, 
you know, I don't think there was too much pop intended for this album. It's like it got sped up a little bit. They messed with the tuning. It also brought the key of it up a little bit and forced him to like do some other stuff. But he liked it so much that he kept it instead of yeah. bringing it back down to where it was. So, you know, to make that yeah. the benchmark of the album is really off because it kind of this version of it was a little bit accidental. So yeah. I think it was kind of meant to be a little darker, but more the beautiful side of dark as opposed to the treachery, like, or like, you know, complete, yeah, like that. I'm ready to drown myself in a bathtub dark. <laughs> <you know? laughs> yeah. I could see that like a poppier in the sense of like close to me or something where it has kind of a dark side when you listen to it. You know? Yeah. And, yeah. You know, it's like the idea of Friday in Love is still kind of miserable, you know? It's like he, he's he's not happy every day other than Friday. <laughs> yeah, really. yeah, he, the majority of the song, week, yeah. He, yeah, he yeah. is pretty miserable still, you know? <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, that makes a good point. And, and uh, you had mentioned something a long time back when we were writing, Matt, of... Um, uh, it's somewhere he noted that uh, doing the unstuck right was like one of the last things they did. That kind of yeah. segues into almost a wild mood swings vibe if you think about mm -hmm. it. And the answer yeah. is like, yeah, yeah, that song is pretty wild mood swings ish, if that's a phrase. <laughs> yeah, so, it was weird. This is just like a crackpot theory, but yeah, uh, nah, I, I think I came to the right stuff. place with this. <laughs> yeah, um, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like on each cure album there's always one song that's kind of a preview of what the next album is going to be in a weird way yeah. uh, hmm. and so if you go back i'd say disintegration i'd say you can do like love song might be not an exact one to one but kind of a little hint of where it could possibly be going and doing the unstuck that's like pound for pound that's a wild mood swing song you know what yeah. i mean it's it's with the, the different lineup we'll say like the optimal lineup but just his vocal style where he tries to um he crams a lot of words into each phrase like mm -hmm. or each verse and each measure that's something that he really started doing from 1996 and onward especially with the more poppy stuff and uh it just has like this light bouncy cadence that a lot of the wild mood swing song had to it like mid car a little bit yeah, a little yeah. bit of strange attraction as well um i still love it i think it it fits fine yeah. on there but uh yeah, it just seems like a little bit of this could be where we go from yeah. here. You know? Especially if and, you look at because one of my big praises for that song is how rad Pearl's guitar work is on that. There's some like yeah, really cool shit great. going on in that song. And yeah. if you take that out of it, while mood swings ish, it's like, oh yeah, that totally. Yeah. <laughs> like I, if you just kind of threw in some other like I think Wish by far has their best guitar work on it. Like like straight oh, up guitar yeah. work if we're you know we're not talking about anything else but from a from a guitar standpoint i think this is the best guitar parts and sounding even if i'm like maybe not i do think it could use a remix there are some things about some of the mixes and some of the songs i don't love but none of it has to do with the guitar sounds whatsoever yeah. um, it's probably my favorite guitar work of theirs the entire body of work mm. yeah. So that's what I like about the live stuff we got with Paris and show, because it feels like you have the studio versions and then the live always in that era, especially it's like, they yeah. just have a little bit of caffeine on them. They're just yeah. like slightly ticked up a little bit. And right. yeah. Pearl's definitely more experimental with some of the stuff. And he'll, he'll he like stays within, he stays true to the song, but he'll yeah. add a little bit of, of flair to it, which I, I love. Like if, I don't know about everyone, but if you go to a, a concert, you kind of want like, yeah, yeah, pump me up. Like, let's Take get like a, a good. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I love listening the for down. the, for like in live versions of it. The little bit of we're gonna step outside and give you a little bit something different, so that's not exactly what you're hearing on the record. Even if mm -hmm. just a slight change in the melody, a, you know, a little kick up of the tempo. You know, an extra little guitar lick that's not there on the record that they were probably like, you know, I would have added this in, but I didn't think about it till like way late till it was too late you know yeah. i love that that that's part of the the beauty of live music you know because if yeah. not you could just sit home and listen to the record yeah yeah you mm -hmm. don't wanna and they've always been great about that even when it is exactly technically how it is 
I think that's what makes him such a great live band, you know, whether he'll kind of phrase it even slightly different on one part or, you know, it just always yeah. feels a little different, you know, it'll be just a touch faster, a touch slower back in the old days. And now even when they're playing with the click, I know a lot of people have issues with that and stuff, but I still feel like it's got so much personality in life. It never feels robotic to me, you know, I mean, there might be a couple songs that feel like they're dragging a little bit more than they used to back in the day. But, I mean, <laughs> Jesus, they're 60-year-old men. You know, cut, yeah. cut them a little slack, you know? But, but, even, but at the same even time, I've never been the... like, ooh, this one's dragging. But... Yeah, but even with playing to the click, I don't think it's a situation where Robert's like, all right, this one's 125 BPMs on the album, so that's what we're right. going to set the metronome to. I think it's more yeah, like nah, we yeah, like it's... to play it at this tempo, click that in, lock that in, and that's what we'll do. Right. It. So you're still getting, like, a different feel. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You have yeah, a whole really light great. show that is in really precise beat with the music now, too, especially on some songs that you didn't yeah. have back then. I mean, the lights were analog, and you had a guy backstage that was playing the lights. The beat. <laughs> right, yeah. Now, like, you have to have the beat precise. I love that idea if they're like, well, we want to play it faster, but we don't want to fuck up the light show, so just, just stick to it. <laughs> but their light show is so good. I mean, when I say light yeah, show, I mean, so like, good. the whole projection. <laughs> I mean, they've got whole movies playing behind them now. Like, <laughs> totally. nobody, I don't, I haven't seen anything else that's quite like the current yeah. Cure big backdrop. Yeah, I love watching those old bootlegs of something from, like, even prayer to her or something they just like put like a blanket on something and shot like a blue light <laughs> it's, like, it's like wow that was really underwhelming back there you think yeah. like kiss me would have like this crazy light show or something it was like nah just turn like a red light on and <laughs> yeah. it's like yeah she's okay yeah uh, well even the wish tour seemed kind of yeah it just had like pretzels like, hanging everywhere <laughs> yeah <laughs> green light during a forest i don't know yeah. Orange light open. It's like we're standing on sand. <laughs> okay, cool. No one could see it from the audience, but that's cool. <laughs> but, um, I guess as far as the flow of the album too, I like going to that idea of play out. I was watching the other night and how a lot of us, I think, kind of probably safe to say we there's versions of like Wendy Time and Cut and mm -hmm. stuff. Um, I almost wonder if they did make the decision to to bump those up, that one being funkier, and they cut more rock in just to give the album a little more, like, oomph and diversity in a sense of, like, it would be kind of a slower... If you swap those versions in, you know, and I would probably like it better, but at the same time, sure. if you're listening to it, it would be, like, a part than Wendy Time or something. You know what I mean? It would be all very, like, oh, you know, like... Yeah. You think maybe that was the decision where they're like, let's just try it funky and... I, I think that's the, the good and the bad of like tinkering with stuff where you can tinker too much. Like, yeah. for example, Wendy time, I think, um, I don't know if it's something I read in an interview uh, regarding the big hand where they had tried that multiple, multiple times, like a few times. Yeah. So there's like that instrumental one at the end of play out that yeah. uh, is only slightly different, but they just kept going on and working on that. Um, not Friday I'm in love. Did, was Friday in love another one where they like like Antonio I know you said they were messing with the tuning and the the uh, pitch speed. a little bit yeah like, was that demoed in like concert pitch with the same vocals or is that uh there are some other demos out there but yeah, they don't have vocals yeah like everything's always instrumental in those early steps you know so is it like Dave Allen was saying on your show that they spent probably a little too much time on on some of the stuff and just with the music for dreams and all the instruments yeah. maybe it wasn't as focused but yeah i wonder what it'd been like to your point if he just recorded the stuff and then just let it be like with yeah. wendy time i know it, may, it might have been like a slower more downer album i guess but be yeah. interesting to hear yeah i love that version we'd probably have a couple more albums if he would just do bullshit yeah. like that uh, <laughs> yeah. just write it and leave it alone yeah, right. <laughs> I know. I know. I did read somewhere that, um, you know, at the time it was pretty for you know for him recording it and where they did it in the type of console, it was almost the max amount of tracks 
yeah. in that tracking that you could have at that time in a studio, and they used yeah. every one. 48 or something yeah, like that? Yeah. yeah. I forget what the number so, was, but it was they maxed it out. Yeah, that, that, yeah, that's completely maxed out with stuff bounced down, but it's also – you know, Basically. still going on two inch tape. So it wasn't, it wasn't right. digital where, you know, you couldn't really change or manipulate um, things after the fact as much, but they mm -hmm. definitely like layered the shit out of it, you yeah. know? Mm -hmm. And which is probably also the reason at the time that the mix is not, I feel like maybe a hundred percent there. You know, because it was like all of a sudden you got it and you're like, wait, how many tracks am I mix mixing? Yeah, and like, I mean, there's so all this stuff going that. on. <laughs> you, you know, yeah. so, how do you prioritize I mean, a track when you've got that many? You know, well, yeah, yeah. And that's what I'm saying. In Pro Tools days, that's that's not that's nothing. You know, I mean, I was working on some new tracks last night, and I was like, before I even laid down a basic idea it's it's you know 17 18 and i haven't even started vocals or anything or really anything serious you know and not even to mention multiple takes of things so it's you know uh at yeah. the time it was like it was a hefty thing to to sit down and mix yeah. you know Dave which Allen is, was like glad to hand it off it's like i'm not yeah. mixing that thing. <laughs> jesus although i still think i'd cut off a toe to hear his mixes <laughs> yeah, <totally. laughs> I think that's something we all learned from that conversation. I think it's like, oh, I mean, I'm technically fine with the mixing. I think there is a little, or it just is leaning towards what we're seeing later when the billion harmonies are a little high and his voice gets a little up there. But at the same time, you know, I think it's a great album and it all works. But yeah, I would love to just hear Dave Allen's take on it. You know, I mean, at that point, he's. Done, did so well with all the other mixes that I'm like, oh man, especially he was saying, like, it's a bit more disintegration sounding. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, what I would give, what yeah, I would give, so, hopefully, yeah, yeah. Well, he, didn't he write, he wrote us back and was like, yeah, I was, uh, I, I thought about it and like, I'm gonna be like on the point of like this because everybody's going to be wanting to hear it and like i don't yeah. <laughs> i'm not gonna let it go it was yeah. like oh, yeah fair enough we weren't asking for it but yeah, yeah. i'll take it yeah everyone's showing up with torches and <laughs> yeah like Give people lining up the the <laughs> but uh yeah i mean that's why it is curious to you know, I don't know if we officially want to go into old man grape yet of my uh 20 minutes i need at least about the reissue deluxe that needs to come out you know but i wonder what we'll get as far as like the mix if it's gonna be something like robert's probably just gonna fucking remix it all himself knowing mm -hmm. him at this point <laughs> he's like i'll one. do it <laughs> or uh you know it didn't sound like there was any uh plans for dave to put that in as a bonus disc or anything and yeah. uh at this point, I'd just be happy with the album on yeah. a deluxe, of course, you know, and just bump it up a little so it's not so quiet when I put it on a mix with other albums, you know? Just... I think we have some good news, though, because <laughs> Miles Showell did the um, Wild Mood Swings picture disc, which sounds great, way better okay. than the CD, and he did the um, 2018 Mixed Up reissue, which also sounds fantastic. Okay. So hopefully Robert sticks with him. I know yeah. he's loyal to his guys like Corkit and everybody. If he just sticks with him, I don't think we have to worry about anything. Cause yeah, just boost it. Throw some work. extra but shit he, on there. That would be great. But it was also 2018 when he did say that wish was going to get that. So maybe because in 2018, he said it was done. He said it was oh, already. He said it was done. Roll. Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. So, yeah. You know, so the wild mood swings remix. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, it depends on if he had his medication that day. <laughs> so it's like it's not done, Robert. It's done. I heard, and I don't know if you want to keep this in or tweak it out or anything like yeah. that, but it, like some internet dirt that it was done, yeah. that it actually was done. Like there was a guy. Actually, I have two things. One yeah. about the Dave Allen thing specifically where, I don't know, Kate, were you on the um, old Cure fans message board like 2003-ish, 2004? No, not at that time, no. No, mm -hmm. they had, I don't remember, again, like so much of this stuff is kind of lost to time now, unfortunately. Yeah. I wish I'd archived a lot of it, but um, <laughs> just not thinking about that stuff, you know? yeah. yeah. There was a, a fiction employee, and I never got the sense that she was close with the band or anything like that, but I don't know if it was like a promotional thing. Yeah. She said, if my memory is correct, like they would get, they would make cassettes of the day's work 
and she specifically was talking about um edge of the deep green sea well like it sounded much better and it would have been dave's mix so that was like the one thing i was like uh, even back then like whoa what what the different <laughs> ver- you know like different versions what? and then someone else said something like oh robert contacted me i did the some like artwork or promo for the um head on the door and kiss me reissues and i started doing stuff on wish yeah so i think that it actually is done, was done. or at least it's been worked <laughs> on for years i think it's just his scattered brain is why it's Something. not coming. yeah, yeah but i think they already dropped the like they already dropped the record store day lists and it's not yeah, and it's on not there. on there yeah nope. but, but yeah, then again there. i'm also kind of wondering is this something that they would just drop on their own on the website? Because, you know, there is a pain in the ass factor to the whole record store day thing. I mean, I get there fucking three, four hours before yeah. they open with a lawn chair, you know, like, and I think this one would probably get more copies pressed of it and would be easier just... distributed probably just through their site. So that's where I'm kind of, giving myself the, all right, so it's not going to be a record store day thing. Cool. I can just go online that day and get it. I'm hoping, you know, like, yeah. So Mm -hmm. yeah, I hope so. They need to get away from that. Like where record store days, the only fucking time of the year. It's not, but it just so happens that the last (laughs) three happen to be released on record store days. So it's like, get away from that. I think, yeah, there's, there's a lot of interesting things too, because Rhino did the disintegration and there's definitely money to be made there. So you would think that they'd want to get involved yeah. or if not them, I know, cause he's still, he's not in contract with universal, but yeah, there's, some, there's yeah. some rights with that. With, <laughs> yeah. Well, that, that's gotta they, be something yeah. like that. That's holding it, it up. It, there's no yeah, way. It has, to, it has to be, yeah. they know that this might, I mean, except for like a new album, this would probably be their highest selling reissue yeah. package. So I'm sure there's interest with, universal and rhino or, or whatever yeah, to, somebody. to do that like i don't think anyone gave a shit about the the uh wild mood songs picture disc so it was just like cool all right great yeah. that's cool thanks for doing it and here you go yeah. Yeah, but even, which is exactly why it was just a picture disc you know? right. yeah but, but so. even even the, i mean the, the wild mood swings initially that didn't come out on vinyl right if i remember correctly right? i think it did, it did. yeah oh yeah, yeah. it it's very small, but it was a small, yeah, was... small quantities, right? Yeah. But in comparison to the fact that, like, Wish didn't have like tons of pressings, you know, I mean, it is the most sought after yeah. vinyl yeah. of theirs from all their major records. So yeah, it by far I think would be the highest selling probably reissue. I mean, yeah, well, be... maybe because I mean, Disintegration alone, I think I own four different copies of on vinyl. <laughs> Yeah, I th- I think it would marginally sell better than like if they did even just another repress of like you know disintegration just because everybody's gonna buy it you yeah. know it, it's uh, but going back to Antonio's point I think they only released one album that wasn't on record store day and that was the Japanese Whispers right. picture disc and everything yeah, else has the- been on record store day. So yeah, and pornography is um, coming out this record yeah. store day, right? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, which has already it's... been done. But hey, it, yeah, it is what it is. But you know, I, I just... yeah, like I already have the remaster of that on vinyl, and I'm like, am I gonna buy it on picture this too? And I'm like, I know I probably am, but I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> but there's gonna be a point where you get to it where that's gonna be the only one that's missing. Yeah. I know. Yeah, you're so, gonna run out. And then of you time. won't be able to get Thanks it because lot. it'll be all. Like, That's less money I have to spend on your shirts. So. <laughs> <laughs> the one thing I don't know if it's a red flag, but the fact that we got blood flowers before that yeah. seemed a little. That yeah, could also be part of the so thing. With maybe there's some kind of legal thing or record. Know, yeah, culture. it's gotta yeah. be. But I mean, and I, you know, hopefully they'll they'll stick to the idea of the double CD thing because I want all that oh, bonus please, shit. You know, yeah. it's like you gotta put like, at least it's lost been so wishes. Long, you gotta get it right. You know. Yeah, you know. Was, was like... Blood Flowers remixed and remastered though for that vinyl? No, it was, was just it was just yeah. straight to. So that's what I'm saying. I'm gonna double check right there's, now. There's, but, um... I don't think it was. I have it downstairs, but I that that's the issue with Wish though is if you're gonna remix it, you're gonna remaster it. You, yeah. you know so there were, and you know like you said it's now how many labels ago you know there's just so much mm-hmm. that goes into that 
Yeah. yeah. There's bootlegs going around already for for Wish. Yeah. And yeah. but they're not remastered or anything. So like, mm-hmm. if you're gonna do it, you might as well remaster it because if not, I'm just gonna go buy a you know a bootleg yeah. and get the same the same sound for the <laughs> most part. You know. Yeah. But, I don't yeah, know. yeah, I don't know. Hopefully, they'll, I mean, there's so much shit they could throw in there. Even just like a DVD of show would be great to include in it. You know, I mean, if you just slid that in, yeah, you know, yeah. we put it out like, to David man, Allen. Like, you know, and yeah, we, we tried. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, so, yeah, I, it, I'm just the picture uh, is does say remastered, but it doesn't say by who. Well, yeah, and you wonder too. Did they just kind of do the the vinyl? Remaster? I was just gonna say you know, that like, that's the thing like, when when you're going to something right, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah. just very easy to change where that's yeah. laying just so that it sits better on vinyl. But the yeah. remixing would be the real, you know. Mm-hmm. And then you're you're completely tearing the house apart as opposed to just <laughs> you know, painting it up, and making it look nice. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hopefully yeah because i mean lost wishes you only have like scattered mp3s flying around i never got the tape did you get no. that anybody got, got no. that in their possession the actual fan club no. 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 I, I had it first. did you have it back in the day i had it and ah. actually along those pen pal letter things so yeah. i have a postcard that was in my pen pal letters that i had written her and it says Oh my God, Fiction Records called my house and my mom answered the phone and they were apologizing that that Lost Wishes hadn't arrived yet. And she was like, who, you know, somebody called with a British accent. I'm like, ah, my God. (laughs) Robert Smith called my house. (laughs) And I asked Chris White about this. Like I asked Chris White, because I'm like, was that, because you ordered it through cure news like that's how you found out about it and he said no that wasn't that wouldn't have been me that that called that would have been somebody at the fiction office oh wow that's so wild (laughs) but no no i lost that in my uh divorce (laughs) not because he wanted it but he destroyed a lot of my shit that's all What? All right, where does he live? We're, we're heading there right now. Come on. Yeah, mean? I know. I was just going to say. Like, <laughs> Hop in. Damn it. Yeah, I mean, that, that. those are so cool. You know, I mean, I just never even trust when I get a good copy of it off of an MP3 or something. I'm always trying to upgrade it. Or I'm like, is this still the best it could ever sell? I don't know. <laughs> you know, I'm just always so skeptical of like, if I just had it on a bonus disc of a reissue or something, I could just rest yeah. easy knowing like, this is the best it's ever going to sound. This is, yeah. these are the select numbers from music for dreams that he actually gives a shit about and are the actual band. And, you know, I mean, there's so many like little question marks with all that stuff floating around out there that it's yeah. like, oh man, it would be nice to just have like his clear opinion and view on like, <laughs> this is what you missed, you know, this, yeah. <laughs> take it or leave it at that point. So yeah, I don't know. I hope it comes out. Like I said, it's just, it's very worrisome because this is the gear, you know, it, it does seem to be everything falls on these anniversaries now and everything's got to be this, I mean, if you just randomly put it out like last year, that'd be great. But it doesn't seem like anything's falling in that pattern anymore. You know? yeah. so well, like, uh... disintegration was 2010, so they missed that by a year. Yeah, uh, so true. Year. But, true. But that was pretty close after the other reissues, right? I felt like all those uh, just got kind of cranked so It was 06, so you had a four-year gap. Yeah. yeah. There yeah. also was the massive issue with pressing plants right now. Like, yeah. even... Mm-hmm. Even even the major labels, it's or the bigger labels, it's still taking time, like way more time than it used to, you know. Like but that's a, getting up there now. I mean, I'm sure it is true, but I'm like my conspiracy. I'm like, come on, what the fuck, man? Come on, look, <laughs> yeah, there's yeah. local plants over here. It's a cure. Who the fuck is? Like, can we yeah. not press the third eye blind reissue, maybe, and just <laughs> put the fucking you know? It's like, what or the just hell? put it out digitally. <laughs> like, come on, this is bullshit. It's like, yeah, with the uh, COVID shortage, we we. Uh, we all, all our vinyls actually coming from Ukraine now, so we can't. Like, what <laughs> the fuck is happening? You know, I was like, come on. Just... It turns out Putin was a big Smiths fan. So yeah. 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 <laughs> it's, just, it's like, this guy never stopped. Jeez. Oh, yes. <laughs> but yeah, I'm starting to call bullshit on the vinyl thing, but I'm sure there's some truth now. I mean, what Records are selling more now than they have since the 70s. 
Yeah. So the the amount of people pressing records is larger. The amount of people buying records is larger because it's it's becoming the only way that people are buying physical music now. Man. So it's you know it used to be fucking like punk bands and like just anyone that was still trying to stay cool to music was still pressing vinyl over the last you know yeah. twenty something twenty five thirty years. But now fucking Billie Eilish is pressing vinyl every time she does something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you know, on top of records up. the reissues, the indie bands, the punk bands, yeah. the, you know. So it's like I know um, Wax Tracks was just posted on their Instagram. Um, they were like making a plea to the major labels. They were like, "Can you guys all just open up your own pressing plants for your pressings?" <laughs> right. Because you're yeah. pressing, you know, a hundred thousand yeah. copies, where this local band is trying to press five thousand before their tour this summer, and now yeah. they won't have records for tour, and that's the only way that they're putting guests. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, like. The, the big labels are swallowing it all up. Now, granted, yeah, The Cure is the big label, but now with how he's <laughs> delaying getting everything to everybody, yeah. now you're probably on this list of totally, other yeah. people that are just as big <laughs> that are waiting for pressed vinyl. So it's like... Uh, I just wish there was like some magical kind of like plastic thing that sounds real good that like, <laughs> could read it with a laser and then you could just like put it in and make it and it costs like a dollar to make. You know? Oh, It'll like a great. CD? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like Elon Musk needs to open a vinyl pressing plant, you know? Yeah. As you can see, my giant CD stack in the back, I'm biased. Yeah, there, yeah. So. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, yeah, who knows? But they'll sort it out, I'm sure. But I don't want to devote all the time to, to <laughs> griping about the deluxe. About but, uh, <laughs> does everybody have a, a specific highlight from Wish that would be your go-to if you're just picking one or two or three off that are your highlights? I mean, yeah. yeah. It's your favorite wish songs, <laughs> for lack of better terms. Who wants to go first? Not everybody at once. I'll go. Off the top of my head, letter to Elise. <laughs> Definitely a letter to Elise. Uh, let's see. What else? Trust, I think, is a great uh, sad one that always gets a little overlooked. Yeah. And Edge of the Deep Green Sea. That would be my favorite this week. <laughs> yeah, exactly. What about you, Matt? What do you think? Yeah, um... I'll say just because I think we're a lot of us are going to say Edge of Deep Green Sea. And yeah. to least, uh, I'll give a shout out to Cut um, because yeah. it's typically not a style of song I'd really like, but I just think the layers in that and again, Robert's vocal, like the conviction and delivery on that. Yeah. It really hits hard. I don't know. I listen, that's the one that stuck out to me most of my re listening in the past day or two. Like, um, just kind of like the, you can kind of hear some of the pain in his voice where if only you would look at me the way you once did and that kind of slows down you have like a little like guitar stuff going on and yeah. then the, it kicks back in and then yeah. it's like serious rocking yeah, like, just unload, like, like yeah his vocal i wish could be his best vocal performance like of all the studio albums just yeah. raising it that high in the last dawn and then yeah like the trust he gets pretty high on that yeah. too so yeah I'll, I'll go cut um and then I've yeah, I've always had a, a, a soft spot for tuition possible things also. Yeah. yeah. Nice. What about you, Kate? You got personal favorites that always hit. Mm. <laughs> well, from the edge of the deep green sea it gives me chills. Yeah. And uh tuition possible things I love. So then it's kind of between I actually really do like doing the unstuck. And I really like cut as well. I really like the yeah. Um, yeah, the wah wah works so much better on that than Wendy time. Like they nail it on that one. Cause I, I like that slow version. No kidding, but yeah. I feel like <laughs> but, uh, it, it definitely rocks in such a perfect way that it is like, yeah, I like the slow version early glimpse, mm -hmm. but I think the rock one is, it makes total sense to put that on the record. Yeah. There's really no other song exactly like that on the album either yeah. Yeah. And i have to say for the record that i really dislike a part yeah is that your that's my mm -hmm. i know yeah, i'm sorry if i'm jumping light. ahead but like that it just drags on but that's that's your boy's song that was a boris 
composition. Was it? Yeah, yeah, but he his part is fine. It's the rest of it. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, that's the one I skip because I want to get to Edge of the Deep Brain Space. Mm. Yeah. And yeah. I feel it's like it's a little early to go that. It is a little like, whoa, we're going here already, you know, in the album. I almost would think they probably should have bumped it a little further back, but. Yeah, you know, they, they could just take it off. That's fine. Just take it off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there, there are some good alternates. We'll get into that, maybe. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I do love the letter to Elise, too, but I really love yeah. the version of a letter to Elise that's on the, um, MTV Unplugged. Mm. Yeah. 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 Oh, that was so so cool seeing that. Yeah. When they're all the sitting on the floor and the whole... candles. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think it is hard to top that the emotion in his voice and shit on that unplugged one is like like almost does make the album one seem a little flat or something, but like yeah, it's 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 crazy how it's just like again if that was like good quality somewhere i think i would mm-hmm. take that version every day you know it's right. just always some shitty bootleg of unplugged that i'm like eh, it's cool but yeah. <laughs> plus yeah. the toy piano is super yeah yeah i know i love that it's like a, a different little lyric. Lyric. so good and he does that lyric that's just a little bit different yeah. that he mm-hmm. kind of reverts to when they did play it live you know he yeah. does that with certain songs where you know he wrote a lyric and then he yeah. changed it for the album but then when he sings mm-hmm. it live he goes back to the one that yeah, he yeah the paris version has a slightly different thing in that too mm-hmm. Oh. Mm-hmm. and there's the last line of that different lyric on the unplug where it's gonna get super nerdy but it's like Gindo, Daka, me, but typical. He, like he just kind of mumbles something that doesn't really make sense i'm like is, are those actual I, words or does, like, does anyone like, else like that better than the make-believe ran out which is fine yeah it just feels yeah. like make-believe ran out it, it seemed because you had mm-hmm. such fucking awesome lyrics with like as i said the blue could pull me in if they only would, at least I'd lose the sense of sense, you know, yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. hard that hits. And then the make believe right now, it's kind of like, huh? Yeah. Like, oh, okay. <laughs> but then, Go back to the mumble. I think that was yeah, a little bit better. I thought you were the only girl. But he couldn't know. put the lyric, yeah. like they, they actually printed the lyrics in the sleeve. So oh, I'm going yeah. to it right now. You couldn't go. Yeah. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> oh, yeah. Let's get the uh, cassette out. Of the unplugged one? No, no, yeah, no. Uh, I'm, yeah, on, I'm on the real wish. one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wish. Yeah, I don't, I don't no, there's that I... one line on the unplugged one. Yeah, I can never figure out what the hell he's saying because I don't just, think it's actual. Oh, that's right. It ends with there's nothing more I can really do. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Yeah, so like good. falling sand as fast as I pick it up, it runs away through my clutch. I like hands. that one. Yeah, that one's that's yeah, that's great. Cool. Yeah. Very visual. Awesome. What about you, Chaz? You got highlights? Uh I mean, yeah, Ed, Edge of a Deep Green Sea, everybody said that. Uh, um, doing the Unstuck, I've always been a huge fan of that song. Uh, I argued that a couple times on this on this show. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, letter of release, but uh, um, Trust is kind of like a hidden, like not hidden, but like it's definitely a song that I could take those synths all, all day long. I, yeah. They, such a great song. But mm-hmm. yeah, um, I've been trying to actually find a synth sound in Logic Pro X to match that song. Actually, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, be it's cool. It's really good. But yeah, there's not a lot of down on this album for me, except for one song. But so mm. I can't really say. <laughs> I, none of it's a you know they're all high high points on this except for one. So, yeah. but I, I can even argue it. for Friday I'm in Love. So, you know, yeah, it's a beautiful song. It yeah. Is. Hell yeah. No, no one can deny the the catchiness of that song. I mean, right. oh. well, you can, but you can, but <laughs> it's a losing <laughs> argument, you know. Right. It's... Yeah, it always just seems so like, yeah, <laughs> with, with any kind of true hatred of Friday I'm in Love, it's always like, is it just because it's so popular? You know, it's like if it was just a song like Mint Car that, you know, got a few plays that nobody really gave enough care to, really, I wonder if it would have as much stigma as it does to it, you know? Or it's like, yeah. 
It makes me happy for them though when I hear it for some yeah, reason. Yeah, yeah. Hell yeah, good. they got like, this. They did it. This is yeah. their big hit. Like, let them have it. You know, but there's just yeah, something. Yeah. There's, there's just something life. about it, even like in a in a club standpoint, when that song comes on, and it starts, you just watch people gravitate yeah. to dancing, yeah. and everybody's mood changes in in like a positive way. Like it's fucking mm-hmm. really cool to watch. You know, like from yeah. when I used to DJ, if I dropped that song on, it it, it could be like just everybody, but whoop, would, and, and you know, and there's just yeah. like, that's where I'm like, you can't deny it. Cause not, you know, everyone in this room is all different, you know, maybe fandom, not fandom, likes punk, likes new wave, likes this, that, but then that song comes on and it's just like, whoop, you know, so there's just yeah, something totally. powerful about it. Yeah. And especially because it doesn't have like a big like close to me kind of dance groove or something you know what i mean for like just a cool guitar right riff. but it kind still of, like, incites everyone going to the center cool of the floor part. and just like having fun you know it's yeah, a great so, uh, sing along yeah, yeah definitely yeah and, like you can't not sing it yeah it's a it, it's oh. a karaoke staple you know <laughs> <laughs> sure. my favorite line of that like i think that if it didn't have one line then it would have just been like too syrupy but the part where he says to see you eat in the middle of the night it's like that's like so specific (laughs) there's something about that like yeah, it does make yeah. it. Nobody writes lyrics like that. Who else writes right. lyrics like that? Yeah, I know. You're right. Yeah. And that's how I always defend that song too. It's like it's still just care weird enough to be a care yeah. song. You know, it doesn't yeah. sound yeah. like they totally were just like gunning for the fences of like whatever. Let's we'll just give them what they want. You know, I mean, they're right. still like, like... If, if you had the arrangement of like gone and you just put the Friday and, and love <laughs> words <laughs> over it. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, I mean, it's just the fact that it has like the brrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr
I like how the chorus though is how did we get so he well that's what I was gonna say because story, then you know? he jumps like... into it but then that's the point where I'm like oh my god you're singing about me and then I get to the chorus and I'm singing it and I get to say that it's... because now yeah. I'm in now it's in my shoes so it's a yeah I feel like that that was done on purpose yeah. for you know and I think I'm curious does anybody still have the lyrics out is I the whole I have it in quotes yeah. I mean, it'd be weird quotes? if they said how did they get so far apart yeah that would just be weird it would be <laughs> yeah you know but it's if like, it's all in quotes it's still them saying it I wonder right. like yeah you know, well, I mean I, I have it on Google they're so singing it's not together be lyrical yeah <laughs> well you know when they did that um with churches and he sang just like heaven yeah. And and it became a duet. It kind yeah. of brought a new dimension to it that I like Ooh. hadn't really thought about. And if you yeah. if you had a part, yeah. yeah, you know, you've got someone who's a narrator, and then suddenly you've got the two nar- the two characters singing mm-hmm. together. Yeah. And he does that again on a perfect boy, which I love too. Right, uh-huh. like the same thing. Yeah, yeah. Him the him and her thing. Yeah, yeah. it's it, like I said, it's very rare when he does it and this is just done so well um yeah. you know but for me for sure and you know i know you guys have a letter to elise um so not only is it one of my favorite cure songs but even its cover version done by Sensefield is by far one of my also one of my up. favorite songs because i also love it's Sensefield, really and mm-hmm. uh, it by? uh this band Sensefield. We'll put it in right now. Yeah. So and <laughs> and even more so because you know I got to meet John Bunch, the singer from Sensefield, a couple times, um, growing up, and he was always like super fucking nice and great to me. And he passed away now, not too long ago, probably about four or five years ago. Um, and they're yeah. a band that was very pivotal for me in like kind of my, you know, like growing up in like the hardcore scene and punk rock and everything Sensefield was one of those bands that was a little more melodic and and kind of intertwined things and uh you know saw them a lot throughout the years and they opened up doors for me to see other bands that I then loved and they do such a beautiful cover of it and to have like the original and the cover like my love for them both be so big is a testament to what a good written song it is you know, yeah. it's just, um, you know, it's, it's, you know, perfect poetry and I love it. And like I said, this album, you know, to me, teeter tottered between my favorite album back and forth for, for years. Um, but you know, the, the cohesiveness and the, the gorgeous sonicness of disintegration kind of always pushed past this one for me to, you know so where if i'm picking one it's that but this is uh like like i said i feel like it has so much on it it's a you know it's an emotional roller coaster which i need out of all my cure records you know Um, (laughs) and like it's definitely one of their more like it's one of the more fun artwork i mean you know i've said it before like Mm -hmm. the the one thing where this i I think the band has missed out is they should have fired their graphic designer (laughs) a long time ago um you know um (laughs) you know because i mean luckily i had already loved the band before and discovered and heard them before i went out and was grabbing records because i can't tell you how many albums i bought because of the covers and i probably would have skipped some of them like i would i wouldn't have grabbed faith if i was basing it on the cover but you know there's plenty of times you know i'd i'd thumb through it you know, you'd see something, you then you'd look at the back and you're, well, what label is it on? You know, okay, well, I like other bands from that label, you know. So, yeah. you know, that was always the, but this was a, this was a definitely a fun cover that definitely probably drew a lot of people's eyes and, yeah. you know, it, it different in that aspect. And like I said, the fact that it just says Cure, the Cure Wish, not The Cure was, is a cool standout. Arched. Um, and you know, again, they they stay with their consistency with great opening tracks. You know, yeah. I mean, there's just nobody better at I think opening albums than The Cure, uh, for sure. And yeah, I think this one definitely starts that whole. You know, we got a taste of it with 
you know, where it's just gone full throttle at this point. I guess by plain song was already established that, but just like the epic, you know, kiss that. Yeah. <laughs> this one just really kind of locks it in from this point on. You're always going to get this kind of yeah. long, big, epic song kicking it off, you know? Yeah. And, and you know, the um, length of the songs on this record don't, don't even like, you know, when we were mentioning and you were saying, oh, yeah, that's, it's a long song. I'm like, it is? Yeah. You know, and yeah, I think that's just it, a it testament to crazy. the songs because I, you know, I agree. I don't even realize yeah. how long they are because, like I said, I put it on and I just let it run through. Or yeah. if I am making a mix, it's, you know, when the songs hit, yeah. I'm like, cool, they're here, you know, right, right on. And blew my mind when we were talking about show and you had brought up, you know, the differences of, like, yeah. you know, the Paris one or, and, or, yeah, or which show, that. I guess. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, I was like, I never even realized how long that song. <laughs> yeah, like you don't <laughs> you don't realize it at all. But you know, yeah, this the record opens up and ends fantastic, like like they do always. You know, same thing with disintegration. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, uh, so good at that. And yeah, like I said, it kind of this is the record that threw them into the atmosphere bigger than big. Uh, it it locked up that you know best lineup of songwriting, I guess we can say. You know, because. Yeah. From a performance standpoint, like who knows, you know, I'm not that I'd have is a way different breakdown and it's way too many years yeah, yeah, to yeah. say, you know, like you said, between age and everything else. Um, but you know, those are my yeah. thoughts. And you know, I mean, when yeah. Wendy, Wendy time would be the song I would skip if I was going to skip a song, yeah. Is uh, everyone in agreement on that one then, maybe, <laughs> or, or maybe a better question than not pick on Wendy time since it's its special birthday too and all, but. Um, <laughs> is Wendy Time only a, a, a lesser track in the sense that the rest are so good? Maybe does that make, or is it just not that great of a song? <laughs> no, I think it just ruins the potential of a perfect album. Yeah, it really is the like, only. Yeah, like, yeah. Even if it was in my opinion, semi decent. Yeah, I would still be like, oh, okay. You but know. I felt like for years as a kid, I never really, I never really loved it. But at the same time, I never really was like, eh, that, that's like the only one that misses. Like I was always just kind of fine with it. I think it always bothered me that I liked the other version so much better yeah. from Play Out. Yeah. But, um, yeah. Like there, uh, what, if you hear the Wendy Time demo, the 91 demo, there's no going back. Yeah. yeah. I think it's that's what it is. <laughs> just, I'm like even that for first. something as structurally simple as that, and they're literally just. It almost sounds like they're just kind of riffing as they go. But, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It was, doesn't. Uh, yeah, it, I'm not going to go as far to say it's their worst song by any means, but um, yeah, yeah. It, it's it's by far the weak link on the record. I mean, you, we'll, we'll be nice enough to say that. I mean, I think yeah, it's probably an agreement thing. What do you think, Kate? Apart versus Wendy Time. Where's uh, <laughs> where's your low light line? I feel like a part. I feel like a part was a song that they could have put on disintegration but it sounded too much like homesick okay. because of the yeah, yeah. The accordion itself, yeah. yeah. and then wendy time i don't know it's like it's that part of robert that wants to do something a little jazzy yeah. mm-hmm. And and he he had to write a song about it for some reason. There was some conversation. I feel like there was some conversation that happened. He's like, man, yeah, I need to get this down. So, but I don't love it. But I also kind of relish in any song when they play it live that Roger has to play the tambourine. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Is that the only one? Yeah, is that, he was doing the can tambourine I, one. Can I throw one last thing? I feel so bad for picking on Wendy Time. But no, this just, go for it. <laughs> if, I, if I went this episode without bringing this up, I'd be like mad at myself for a week. But <laughs> right again, on. like as we did, listening to the album before, uh-huh. and it's been forever since I heard the song. Is it the worst use of the word wow randomly in a song? Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. but like, but like, but like yeah, towards the end, yeah. What? Where? Like, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Okay. <laughs> wow, that's right. Yeah. right. If you're gonna drop the f bomb, it's like not the one. You know, it just doesn't seem like you know something like trap or. I, I guess yeah, I just like, forgot. Do it. Yeah, but yeah, it's just like what? This, this got you the Where explicit lyrics, sticker, but, but um, 
Yeah, it is a, a strange number, too, and really weird when it did come back in the live set. I was like, holy shit, they're bringing that back? For it. it only lasted a few, but was, they're like, yeah, this, this is... Stuff. Roger complained? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, I think so. Ro- Ro- right, I'm already doing this if boys don't cry. Yeah, yeah. Robert, yeah. Lost, Robert lost a bet, you know? Yeah, they probably, enough they probably bet on a soccer I think it was match and he's throwing like, Reeves a bone. Yeah, yeah. He was just like, oh, let's yeah. play some funky guitar stuff. Um, hey, I you know surprised. what? Mint Carr is another one where he plays yeah. tambourine, yeah. and that is one oh, really? where he won, he wins a bet every time that Robert doesn't play the solo, right? Yeah. <laughs> or he I wonder did. If that's continuing. Fine. I wonder yeah. if that bet's still going. Oh, Maybe. oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's just like, ha ha. Every time. Uh, <laughs> it's like, ah. um, I was surprised listening to Windy Time carefully today for the first time in a long time. Um, that, that cool little synth part is in there. Like, it's like buried, uh, yeah. but it is yeah. in there. Yeah. It's like I'd kind of forgotten or something. Just buried. Because yeah. I've been listening, you know, from that play out version that it's so cool because it's so prominent in that, you know, when it's all slow. Mm-hmm. And he's just like, oh, you could do it. You know, just <laughs> it, the vocals work so much better when he's just like half sedated, like singing it instead of like, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I guess that, you know, all things considered, if that's the one hiccup, again, it's a little early in the album still. Or it's like, wow, okay. Now, I remember on my first listen too, I was just because uh, that <laughs> previous one, it was just kind of like, oh, okay, we're doing this now. Well, all right. <laughs> awesome. So, you, know? so like, he, you guys had this Twilight Garden. You had yeah, it ready to go. Yeah, okay. that's a good segue. Uh, Thank yeah. you. <laughs> it's like this fucking brilliant, beautiful song. Oh. It was just like Twilight yeah. Garland and Halo. Halo yeah, is like Halo's one of their best so B sides. Oh, yeah. I still feel like that would have been a and that's, number one that's the travesty hit. is like how many people who picked up wish never got to hear these awesome b-sides oh, you know? yeah, yeah. like yeah. the casual fans that you know yeah even play i'm gonna go to bat for scared as you too if, and not yeah. a lot of people bring that one up. that's a beautiful song. great vocals on that too yeah. and um yeah simon's bass on that thing is just like I've never heard him play like that again. It's just like, just yeah, it is a definitely different for him. But it, about the where Wendy Time lays on the record, though, uh-huh. the so what I will say is technically towards the end of the A side on the vinyl. Mm-hmm. So if you put it, if you push it further on, when it's when you flip that record over to the B side. It's, Friday it, it's you know no but it would be too close to the front of it then that oh, song right. so it, it's funny with yeah. with how yeah it is pretty perfect, especially really. for musicians who grew up listening to vinyl you were very specific about you almost laid it out like two albums so but you probably don't want to end the a side with it so you put it at <laughs> right. that you know like so it, from yeah. a from a vinyl nerd standpoint it kind of does sit at the right spot, you know, yeah. because you can't end like a side with it because then the person's the not going to flip yeah. it over and drop the next the one on the B yeah. side, yeah. you know? So it kind yeah. of is in the, like when you're going to put the quote unquote weaker song on, you kind of, they were always thinking of it from the A to B on flipping a record. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, like we think yeah, about it different like now in the digital day and age and you know playlists and shuffling but yeah. and even with cassettes because you know vinyl was definitely not a concept at this point other than robert being sentimental and loving you know that age probably but even with a cassette you're flipping it right. over there yeah you so know? you're still so worried about the, the a same. and b side yeah as opposed to yeah that makes sense yeah. and Was you that can't the really... last song on the a side no, uh, think, doing the unstuck. Doing the unstuck, you, right? Yeah. Uh, so because okay. so, you don't want to end with your week one, but yeah. you want to put it towards oh, yeah. the tail end of it because you want yeah. them to, you want them to be happy or like loving it when they go right. to flip it, right. you know? Because then yeah. you don't drop the needle. You don't want to run to the problem of oh, okay. Yeah, you're like yeah. oh, I don't oh, if that's where that. it's going. I'm not flipping <laughs> it over, you know. <laughs> yeah. And how do you and how do you bridge like 
edge of the deep green sea into doing the oh. unstuck. <laughs> yeah, know? yeah. It's like you got to put yeah. something in between there. Yeah, at least exactly. let them get funky for a minute and forget oh, what the hell's going on. So it does. You're going to get so much hate mail from the Wendy Time fans out there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, <laughs> probably, hey, probably but just that's, be like Robert. That's, that's, so it'll be good. Girl like, we can finally... Wendy <laughs> love oh, that. that's what gets oh, them yeah, yeah, I know <laughs> this and I understand it because if your name is uttered by Robert, yeah, in a song like you love that song yeah that's good how can you nice. not <laughs> totally. he's like gavin time yeah. you're like oh yes oh yes best song ever <laughs> best song <laughs> um so yeah maybe it's time to we'll wind on down this birthday party for wish it's been a good 30 years do you guys uh feel like it's held up is it is it looking good for its age or no it's definitely stood the test of time i would say mm -hmm. for sure yeah, um, you yeah, know, because yeah, because there are records that I've that I loved when I was younger that I listen to a lot less now, you know, and it's like yeah. okay, you know, but you know this one kind of never left my rotations. You know. Cool. Well, I guess we'll start down wind down wish talk there, and uh, you know, happy birthday! I think everybody out there should definitely put it on and crank it up in your ears or on your stereo, every format. And uh, fingers crossed we get some kind of reissue deluxe, at least on vinyl, at some point this year, if not sooner. Hopefully. I think the sooner away from the new album would actually be good, uh, <laughs> just so we could all like freak out and be excited. Like around now-ish would have been awesome, and then we could yeah. like then be freaked out later in the year with the new album. So it's like, oh, yeah, we're, we're so happy. But um, that's a, yeah, the whole other thing. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, any closing thoughts on the actual album from you guys before we sign off? Everybody good with it? I, I have one. Yeah. Well, just from, from the liner notes, there is a yeah. quote from a Percy Bysshe Shelley poem, which I really love, yeah. which is just a small part of... Uh, what is it called? To a Skylark. And I think it kind of encapsulates all The Cure's music. Like if somebody just asked me recently, like, why do you love The Cure so much? And I feel like that this, if I can find it now, I just lost it. Uh, we, we look before and after and pine for what is not our sincerest laughter with some Pain is fraught. Our sweetest songs are those that tell of saddest thought. I feel like that. You're here. Yeah, definitely. Kind of does it all. Bow. Yeah. That and turn it up. It's meant to be loud. Is that yes. on this one? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <that too. laughs> Something like that. Is that because uh, the mastering so... was too low? <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> Fair enough. Cool deal. Well, thank you guys so much. I do want to say before we uh, totally head out, Kate, you got a new book that'll be out by this point, right? Uh, coming yeah, out over... next week, The Secret yeah. Life of the Sea Otter. The Sea mm. Otter, yes. So please go over to curethreads.com. Will you be able to get it at curethreads.com? I'll put it on there, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, so check it out. Continuing the wonderful series. Uh, the, the otter gets his due now so that's gonna be great <laughs> so, uh, it should be out by the time this comes out so go on over and uh check that out matt you got anything you want to plug over there or you got anything coming up that steer the people to all the care fans uh, i'll plug <laughs> the holy hour patreon ah, go thanks, check man. it out there's some great stuff there i don't know um if people realize this, but uh, you can have some fun conversations in the comments and uh, a lot of cool little hidden, hidden gems there. So Awesome. Thanks so much, man. Yeah, cool deal. Well, uh, thank you guys so much, Matt, Kate in particular, for joining us on this big special holiday. I didn't want to open the floodgates to the uh, whole wild world out there like we did for the faith thing. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, these two will be perfect to join us and... Uh, have a nice little private party for our favorite Wish album. And, uh, of course, Chaz and Antonio, thank you so much for making it wonderful. Yeah. I think we did it good. I didn't quite get the cake in time. Um, my tuxedo's overdue. <laughs> so uh, I, gotta get this I do have some cake in the fridge. I think I might have to hit that. 
Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, cool deal. Everybody out there, thanks for listening, and we'll catch you next time. I'm signing off for the holy hour. Thanks, See guys. See you later. Bye-bye. Yeah, bye. <laughs> Talk hard. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs>
is where you'll find the latest pre-orders. So go check them out. And I think that does it, man. And happy birthday, Wish. Happy birthday, Robert Smith. You ready to say signing off? Signing off. Signing off. Bye. <laughs> you want to say anything else?